Hello everybody and welcome to the 2019 Belgium Grand Prix and the Friday practice review. It's been a bit of an interesting day today. Lots of news breaking yesterday in the paddock meant that today was a chance to finally talk about them all thoroughly and understand the current world of Formula 1. However, practice 1 and 2 saw new engines for Mercedes. All of the Mercedes engines get a new one. So Force India have trouble, so Lewis Hamilton have trouble and so Max Verstappen have trouble. All while the two Ferraris were able to make 1-2 in both the sessions. Welcome to Belgium. After three weeks of Formula 1 being away, we are back. Round 13, the Belgian Grand Prix at Spa Francorchamps. We come here as round number 13 of the season as we come onto this impressive circuit. So much history. It's a double header weekend. Next weekend, we're in Italy for at Monza, the Italian Grand Prix, the home of Ferrari, before starting the flyaways. The Singapore Grand Prix on the 22nd of September. A week later, Russia on the 29th. Then a two week break before the Japanese Grand Prix on the 13th of October. Another break before Mexico double headers with the United States Grand Prix. And then on to Brazil and the season finale of Abu Dhabi on the 1st of December. Lewis Hamilton has a 62 point advantage in the championship to his teammate of Valtteri Bottas. Max Verstappen is third. He's closing in on second of Valtteri Bottas with two wins in the last four races. Sebastian Vettel is in fourth place. He's in a battle with his teammate Charles Leclerc. Pierre Gasly now drops to Toro Rosso. He's in sixth and looks unlikely to remain there. Sainz is battling with an ill Kimi Raikkonen this weekend. Kvyat promoted to a lead driver at Toro Rosso. Landon Norris is 10th as well. Ricardo 11th, Stroll 12th, Magnussen 13th from Hülkenberg. Alexander Albon, just 12 races in and with 16 points, is promoted to the team lead role of Red Bull. Perez 16th, Grosjean only with 8 points and looks to be dropped. German Anzi Kibitzer on 1 point and George Russell the only driver without a point on the current grid. In the Constructors' Championship, Mercedes are dominant. 438 points they are leading, well over 200 clear nearly of Ferrari on 288. They are 44 points clear of Red Bull. Red Bull promoting up Alexander Albon in hopes that he and Verstappen can close the gap to Ferrari for second in the title. McLaren are well ahead in fourth place. It's the battle for fifth between Toro Rosso, Renault and Alpha and Racing Point that we're watching. Has to dropping off that battle a little bit and Williams are just happy they get money for scoring a point in the championship. It's the Belgian Grand Prix at Spa for 2019 and we are rearing to get going after a very long summer break. So let's start off then with the first practice session that took place this morning at about 10 o'clock UK time. And it was FP1, which saw Sebastian Vettel lead ahead of his teammate Charles Leclerc. Ferrari dominating very much early on. And what Mattia Bonotto said yesterday on the press day was that today, Th uh, Spa and Monza next weekend are crucial for Ferrari. They must, I repeat, must win at one of those two races otherwise their championship hopes are pretty much down the pan really uh, as the second half of the season got underway here in the 2019 Formula 1 Grand Prix of Belgium the Johnny Walker Belgian Grand Prix is the sponsor this uh, year once again Sebastian Vettel was fastest to 144.574 his teammate Charles Leclerc was second Max Verstappen third on his debut for Red Bull Alexander Albon was fourth and Valtteri Bottas starts, uh, sorry, was fifth with Lewis Hamilton in sixth place, Vettel lapped the seven kilometer Belgian Grand Prix circuit of Spa Francorchamps uh, with the quickest time. He was a few tenths off his uh, best time from FP1 of last year, where the with the Claire ended up two tenths further back. Interesting to note that Ferrari last year topped every single session bar qualifying three, which was in the wet. 
Thank you very much to the virtual stat man for that, who put it up on the data channel uh, during the free practice session. Uh, behind the two Ferraris, well, they were the two Red Bulls. Max Verstappen very much getting on with what has been a very successful last four races for him. Podiums in all of them, victory in Austria, uh, podium in Silverstone, victory in Germany, podium in Hungary. He's been getting more and more confident with that Red Bull car of 2019, getting more and more confident with the Honda engine and the new deal uh, with Red Bull. So already the Red Bull Total and Constructors Championship is better than that last year when they had Renault power. And we all know that Honda want to beat what Red Bull did with Renault in terms of the points uh, this time last year. Well, they've already won uh, two Grand Prix. Who's to say they won't win another one here this year so far? Uh, Alexander Rabon. He impressed, but he's got a new engine, and because it's the car that takes the penalties, he'll start at the back of the grid, so he very much uh, will have an easier start to his Red Bull career. He starts at the back, but he could get up into 10th place. He did that before a few races ago at the Chinese Grand Prix, got into 10th as well, and points as well in the German Grand Prix. Uh, Valtteri Bottas recently confirmed at Mercedes for 2020, as we said, uh, end of the session in 5th. Teammate Lewis Hamilton had a bit of an interesting problem with his car because coming out of Stavolo uh, around the curve to Paul Frey before Blanchimont the car suddenly packed up and he wasn't delivering any power whatsoever so he was struggling a lot around but then he turned to the settings to number three because suddenly green lights crossed the dash and away he went so Hamilton having an issue with his power unit but all of the Mercedes uh, engine cars have got new power units so that is the Mercedes team racing point and Williams as well, new power engines across the board. A bizarre incident for Lance Stroll early on saw the right hand uh, saw the right hand part of the Canadian's uh, engine cover blow off down the Kemmel Strait towards Le Com. It wasn't fast on properly, so the engine cover blew off. And as you saw, sure, sure you saw on my Instagram, a naked racing point car. A true testament to what beautiful technology of speed these cars are. And it's very rare you get to see an F1 car actually like that underneath. Uh, moving on, Danny Ricardo is 8th to a Red Bull ahead of uh, Lance Stroll. Teammate Sergio Perez ran out the top 10 along with Carlos Sainz. It was a bit of a interesting first session for the midfield team. Marcus Ericsson, who was subbing for Kimi Raikkonen, well, he wasn't actually needed in the end. Raikkonen was able to head out onto the track uh, and complete both free practice sessions. So Marcus has missed a race in America for absolutely nothing. So we'll see how that turns out tomorrow if Raikkonen has any soreness. And Lando Norris as well also ran, despite having a boot on his foot early on in the week, after hurting his right foot during a MotoGP running session after last weekend as well. If you all watch his Twitch stream, you know what I mean. Uh, it was disappointing for the Renaults again. They were further back in the, in the standings and Williams were wrapping up the back. But Nicholas Latifi, ahead of uh, his teammate of Robbie Kubica, George Russell, was in the garage and he was not running in because Latifi was out on the track as their third driver. Let's take a look at the times then from FP1. <laughs> So Sebastian Vettel tops the first practice session of the Belgian Grand Prix a 144.574. Charles Leclerc is second on a 144.788. Max Verstappen third on a 145.507. Alexander Albon goes into fourth on his first day for Red Bull a 145.584. Valtteri Bottas is fifth a 145.882. Lewis Hamilton in sixth place on a 145.973. Large Stroll 7th on a 146.198. Daniel Ricciardo 8th on a 146.426. Sergio Perez 9th on a 146.433. And Carlos Sainz rounds out the top 10 a 146.557. Nico Hulkenberg is 11th on a 146.669. Followed by Landon Norris in 12th a 146.670. 13th for Kimi Raikkonen a 147.024. 14th for Roman Grosjean a 147.176. Antonio Giovinazzi is 15th, a 147.333. Kevin Magnussen 16th, a 147.488. Then we get Danny Kvyat in 17th on a 147.636. Pierre Gasly 18th on a 147.968. Nicholas Satifi on his Friday test role for the Williams team is 19th, a 148.784. And Robbie Kibitza in 20th. 
a tall four seconds off the pace, a 148.966. So let's take a look then at the FP2 session from the Belgian Grand Prix and it was a bit more of a relaxed approach in terms of the commentary box I was missing for the first half hour of the session so it was Megan and Dad who took over the lead commentary duties and I came in halfway through and we had a good, we had a really good conversation for about 15 minutes and Megan disappeared and it was just me and Dad left in the commentary box uh, talking and we had a really long discussion and he has a theory that I'm sure he'll bring up during the podcast later on in the weekend. He has a theory the fact that Ferrari are going all out in the practice sessions in order to get positive headlines back in Italy. And that Mercedes know they're doing this, but not going to push their engines too far. I think that is absolutely right, because it explains why Ferrari always seem to top the Friday sessions, and Mercedes always seem to come back on the Saturday. We know that Mercedes sandbags, but it's an interesting point of view that Ferrari just go for it on the Fridays, and that is actually their true pace. So we'll see if that uh, pays out tomorrow in practice. But it was a good start, as Charles Leclerc was the fastest on a 144-123. Sebastian Vettel was second. Valtteri Bottas third. Lewis Hamilton fourth. And surprisingly, Sergio Perez went into fifth place as well. It was a bit of an interesting one whatsoever in that session. It was stopped uh, with three minutes to go as Sergio Perez, who did end up in fifth place, uh, he stopped at the exit of Malmody with what looked to be an oil fire at the back of his car and a turbo failure, me and Dad think. We're yet to have that confirmed, though, ahead of tomorrow's practice three session. But it was a cranking noise and like an ice cream, you know, like an ice cream generator. It was that type of noise suggests turbo i know the session was red flagged and it wasn't restarted and it was all perez that as well we saw that the other racing point of lance stroll uh, complained of having a very hot rear end of the car so that behind his back and underneath his seat uh, was getting hotter and hotter he had to come in and change over so it was interesting to see that the it seems that like mercedes power unit this new spec engine the spec c seems to be having issues so Hamilton had it in the morning now Forsindu had it in the afternoon no such problem so far with Williams but it's an interesting thing to keep an eye on ahead of FP3 so just jot that down the Mercedes engine not reliable we'll see if Mercedes factory team go back to their other engine uh, the previous one for tomorrow's session because you can do that you can change engines before having to commit to it uh, on Saturday morning uh, Bottas, uh, who was in third place with that engine upgrade, the only driver to lap the one minute in the 144 bracket, stopping the clocks eight tenths slower than the Claire to go third, and up a tenth on fourth place teammate of Lewis Hamilton. As I said about Racing Point and Sergio Perez, fifth place in the session. Uh, Behind Perez in the time she's Max Verstappen, the fastest of the two Red Bulls, winding in P6, complaining throughout the session of poor power unit response issues. Now, he did this in free practice one, and now it was Verstappen complaining in free practice two about the power unit issues. He had to box, check the car out, it seems all right. But still, these engines haven't raced for three weeks. Some of them are brand new, so they're going to take a little time just to kick in and reheat. Alfa Romeo's Kimi Räikkönen showed off his four-time Belgian Grand Prix winner, uh, Credentials to go P7, while Stro, Stroll sorry, provided, uh, proved that his teammate's pace was no fluke to go 8th ahead of Daniel Ricciardo. And as well, Perra um, second to top 10 finish of the day for Stroll as well. Considerably, the recent form of McLaren might have been slightly disappointing with their Friday afternoon running an FP2. However, P11 and P15 with Carlos Sainz and Lando Norris. Sainz, though, along with Kvyat, Ricciardo, Hulkenberg, Stroll and Albon, will have a demotion on the grid after qualifying for having new engine penalties. So that is, count them with me, Kvyat, 1, Ricardo 2, Hulkenberg, 3, Stroll, 4, Albon, 5. So from everyone from 14 up, they'll qualify where they start. Everyone from 15 below, yep, penalties. We're into that stage of the season. Do you remember a few years ago at the Italian Grand Prix where Lewis Hamilton was the only driver to start where he qualified from? In that crazy Italian Grand Prix where the rain came down and everything changed because everyone else had grid penalties. Yep, it's going to be another one of those days, isn't it? With the pole sitter might be the only person to start where he actually qualified, unless everyone gets a penalty. It's very bizarre, this situation in Formula 1. Well, we touched on it yesterday, me and Dad, about how we should have more engines in the Formula 1 season, especially with the calendar going up to 22. It seems to be more likely. 
Uh, Williams, uh, P19 and P20. George Russell back in the car after Nicholas Latifi in the morning. He was four tenths quicker than Kibitza. So Ferrari seem to have the advantage here on Friday. In both the sessions, Vettel, Leclerc, then Leclerc, Vettel. It seems that Red Bull and Mercedes are going to have to pull their stocks up tomorrow in FP3. Let's just take a look at the times quickly for free practice two. <laughs> So Charles Leclerc tops the second practice session on a 144-123. Sebastian Vettel is second on a 144-753. Valtteri Bottas third on a 144-969. Lewis Hamilton is fourth on a 145-015. Sergio Perez fifth on a 145-117. Max Verstappen is sixth on a 145-394. Kimi Raikkonen seventh on a 145-708. Lance Stroll is 8th on a 145.732. Danny Ricardo 9th on 145.735. And Alexander Albon rounds out the top 10 at 145.771. Carlos Sainz is 11th on a 145.999. Followed by Romain Grosjean in 12th on 146.120. Nico Hulkenberg 13th on a 146.209. Danny Kvyat 14th on 146.214. Lando Norris 15th on 146.258. Antonio Giovinazzi is 16th at 146.328. Followed by Pierre Gasly, 17th at 146.374. Kevin Magnussen is 18th at 146.399. George Russell, 19th on his first run here at Spa in an F1 car at 147.887. And Robbie Kubica is 20th at 148.331. So then let's take a look at the weather forecast for the Belgian Grand Prix Saturday qualifying. Sunrise is at uh, 6.48, sunset at 20.24. 1% chance of rain in FP3 in qualifying like today. Highest to 29 and lowest to 14 as well. For Sunday though, it looks to be the highest of 19, the lowest of 9. A lot of cloud cover as well. Sunrise at 6.50, sunset at 20.22. And a 12% chance of rain for the Grand Prix. And that's going up and up and up. Right, we'll be back tomorrow at 1.30 with the Saturday practice review. On Sunday, we'll be on at 1 o'clock for the race preview. It's going to be a bit more professional output, though, as we're going to have uh, a look at the feature of the commentary box, lap attack again, and also delivering a bit more of a team response, let's say. And we'll be joining as well for the Grand View podcast on Monday. And don't forget, the F1 Gaming series returns uh, with part four of the Bahrain Grand Prix uh, coming on Tuesday as well. And, of course, on Wednesday and Thursday, we'll be gearing up for the Italian Grand Prix at Monza. But all eyes on the Belgian Grand Prix. We'll be back tomorrow at 1.30 here on YouTube. Who's all here? Bye for now. <laughs>